Hello and welcome back to That's English. Hello. Look what I found out in the street. Hmm. Someone's wallet? Is there any money in it? No, there's no money. Just some credit cards and a driving licence. It looks like someone's been mugged. Hmm. I'll take it to the police station after the programme, if you like. OK, thanks. The police are doing a lot to try and reduce crime. They have police community support officers who work with local communities to solve problems. Did you know that police officers on the beat, los que están en la calle, don't carry guns in Britain? They only carry defensive weapons. Well, in today's documentary, we'll find out more about how the police deal with crime in Britain. While you watch, answer this question. Why does the sociologist think it would be bad for the police to carry guns? We may be in an era of cybercrime where many illegal activities like hacking and identity theft are carried out by computer. But although the police in the UK are fighting high-tech crime, they are also returning to more traditional policing. Police constables, formerly known as bobbies, used to walk the beat, an area of streets that was patrolled regularly, usually on foot. We asked David Cook, a police sergeant in Hartford, about the way policing is changing in the UK. In the old days, police officers spent most of their time on foot patrol or with bicycles. As society changed and got faster, so did police work, and we now use motor vehicles and motorbikes. In recent years, police chiefs have come to recognise there is still a need for traditional police work. The police force has been restructured to create a new role, that of the police community support officer. There is a move towards local community policing. Um, they assist the police constables by dealing with lower level inquiries, so it frees up the officers to deal um, with more serious matters. Um, I'm the Safer Neighbourhood Sergeant, and um, I am in charge of a team of police constables and police community support officers. Uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, we work closely with members of the community, speaking to them, finding out what issues there are in our region and assisting and helping to find a solution to those problems. Any concerns in your area? No. Police have always had to fight typical street crimes, like pickpocketing, vandalism and general hooliganism. But now it's becoming more common for people to carry weapons, particularly guns and knives. British police officers on the beat still don't carry guns, unlike most other police forces. Police in the UK is all about working with our communities and perhaps by um, carrying firearms that could be seen as a barrier between ourselves and the general public. Sociologist Abby Kareem believes most British people think it would be a bad move for the police to start carrying guns. If the police are armed, then the criminals would also wish to carry guns and it would become unsafe for everyone. Putting more officers on the streets may be an expensive way to police Britain's cities. But police chiefs are sure that it will improve their relationship with the public. It looks like there'll be a police presence on the beat for some time to come. So the community support officers seem to be doing a very good job. Yes, but police work has become more complicated today. They also have to fight cybercrime, like hacking. That's true. So did you find the answer to the question? Why does the sociologist think it would be bad for the police to carry guns? Let's watch it again. If the police are armed, 
then the criminals would also wish to carry guns and it would become unsafe for everyone. The answer is criminals will also wish to carry guns and it would become unsafe for everyone. It's worrying that some people have started to carry guns and knives. But I still prefer to live in a country with unarmed police officers. I wonder how people feel about the police in other countries. We ask them, what's the relationship between the police and the general public in your country? Let's see what they say. Most people have a lot of respect for the police in New Zealand. They are generally um, very good, not very corrupt, which is good. Um, in fact, my grandmother was the oldest policewoman in New Zealand, which is quite something. I suppose the relationship is unique in America because um, police officers carry guns. Uh, so there is um, certainly a level of authority built on fear. Um, so I wouldn't say necessarily that people hate policemen. I think that we absolutely need them present. Um, they what, they're what keeps crime down. But um, there's definitely a relationship built on a bit of fear. Some people are very pro-police. Some people can be averse to police due to some of the things that have come up in the media about police brutality and the use of tasers, which can shock people. I think the public are starting to lose a little bit of faith in the police. Uh, there is a lot of corruption within the police force now. Relationship with the police, it depends. <laughs> if you have done something wrong, then obviously it's a completely different relationship. But otherwise, they're quite helpful. It can be quite a difficult relationship. Um, I think because of the drinking culture in Scotland, uh, the police are a much more powerful force, so they need to be. I do believe the relationship in England between police and the public is generally quite good, although there is quite a lot of crime in bigger cities, which may become a problem. So, there seem to be different opinions about the police. Yes, but police corruption and brutality is something that worries most people. Well, in today's episode of That's Britain, Elizabeth visits the Jamaica Inn, a place where a lot of illegal activities took place in the past. Especially smuggling, contrabando. The police had a lot of problems trying to stop that. As you watch, try to find the answer to this question. Why was Jamaica Inn a good place for smuggling? Let's see. Hello. Today I'm on Bodmin Moor. It's an area famous for mysteries and murder. It's quite a small area, only 10 square miles, and it's in Cornwall. Throughout history, the most common crime in Cornwall has always been smuggling. That's bringing illegal or contraband goods into a country. I'm going to go to a pub called Jamaica Inn on Bodmin Moor. It's a famous smuggler's pub. Let's go and have a look. Many people in this area were poor, so smuggling was the only way they could make money. Jamaica Inn is on Bodmin Moor and it's far from the sea, so it was a perfect place to hide contraband. It actually has its own smuggling museum. Amy, you work here at Jamaica Inn. Can you tell me a little bit about the history? Um, it was built in 1750 and uh, it was for uh, stagecoaches, so travellers could come through and stay here overnight. And people also come because of death of Du Maurier? Yes, Du Maurier books are very popular, so they come here to uh, be amongst the atmosphere and the history of the books. Um, nowadays, uh, it's more for tourists, so big coach parties come down, and where there used to be a stables, there is now the museum. This is a, is a 17th century smuggler with his illegal barrel of French brandy. He's blackened his face so he can't be seen at night.
Here are weapons and lanterns used by smugglers. Luke, you work here at Jamaica Inn. People say that there are ghosts here. Do you believe that? I can't say that I believe it. I've never seen anything, but lots of people have. So would you stay the night here? I think I would stay the night, purely because I'd like to, just to see, but I don't think anything would happen. Do you know anyone who has seen a ghost? There are people that say they have. I don't know if they're telling the truth, but I'd... I don't believe it, personally. The writer, Daphne du Maurier, stayed here one night in 1930. The pub's atmosphere and history inspired her to write her famous novel, Jamaica Inn. It tells the story of Mary Yellen, who goes to live with her aunt Patience and uncle Joss Merlin, the horrible landlord of the Jamaica Inn. Mary discovers that her uncle is a smuggler and also a murderer. I won't tell you the rest of the story. You'll have to read the book or watch the film. Well, that's all we've got time for from Jamaica Inn. Next time, we're heading to Plymouth on the south coast of Devon. The museum looks interesting. You can learn everything you need to know about smuggling. And it all seems very atmospheric. I'm not surprised the writer, Daphne du Maurier, was inspired to write her novel, Jamaica Inn. Have you read it, Annabelle? No, but the plot sounds good. Did you answer the question, why was Jamaica Inn a good place for smuggling? Let's watch it again. Jamaica Inn is on Bodmin Moor and it's far from the sea, so it was a perfect place to hide contraband. The answer is, it's far from the sea so it was a perfect place to hide contraband. The smugglers were clever, choosing a hiding place far from the sea, weren't they? <laughs> Do you think it's really haunted? I don't think there are ghosts. No creo que haya fantasmas. But I'm not sure that I'd like to sleep there. Well, that's all for today. See you next time for more That's English. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>